Solar is a big investment that takes years to pay for itself. A lot of people don't have tens of thousands of dollars laying around to build a system that will meet all of their needs. The good news is, if you educate yourself and plan carefully, you can start small and grow bigger later. In this video, I'll give you 7 tips to design a system that gives you room to grow in the future without throwing components away or redoing all of your wiring. Tip number 1 is use stackable inverters. Inverters are one of the most expensive single components of a solar panel system, whether you go grid-tied or off-grid. And there are dozens of sizes to choose from. Instead of pulling your hair out trying to get one single unit that will meet all of your needs now and in the future, focus more on the ability of the inverter to be stacked in parallel. Inverters that are stacked means they are connected to each other and communicate with each other in order to operate as one. In other words, four individual 4,000 watt inverters that are parallel stacked can operate as if they were one single 16,000 watt inverter. So if you choose an inverter model or series that are stackable, then you can buy one now and have the option to add more as your needs grow in the future. Tip number two is to use strings of panels from the beginning. A solar panel string has a single set of cables that go to either a combiner box, grid tied inverter, or charge controller. One way to grow your solar panel system is to decide from the beginning on the makeup of a string and then purchase additional strings in the future. In other words, wire the panels such that the voltage and or current is ideal for future expansion. For example, let's say you need 1500 watts of solar now and later you might want up to 6000 watts. And you decide to use 300 watt panels because you found some on sale. In this scenario, it makes more sense to create a 1500 watt single string of five solar panels and then plan on adding to that in the future with up to three more strings of the exact same size. Otherwise, if you use MC4 Y connectors or a combiner box to bring those original five panels together, you'll have to completely redo the wiring for expansion later. Tip number three is only for off-grid, and that is use a high voltage charge controller. Going along with the previous tip, designing your off-grid solar panel string for the highest voltage you can is ideal, and that requires you to choose a charge controller that can handle higher voltages. High voltage will allow you to push more power through your wires and keep the amount of current lower within the limits of most solar components. To illustrate that, look at the system specs of most off-grid charge controllers and you'll see that they're rated for a specific amount of current which can limit your total power production if you use a 12 volt or 24 volt low voltage configuration. But if you use higher voltage, especially with an MPPT controller, then that same amount of current will produce a lot more overall power. So by making sure you design your system from the get-go with a high voltage charge controller, even if you don't need it now, means you will be ready to increase output easily in the future. Tip number four is use higher voltage batteries. If you're going to use lithium batteries in an off-grid solar panel system or a grid-tied system with battery backup, you're going to be limited in most cases to four batteries in series or four in parallel for lower voltage batteries such as 12 volts. So that may be fine for now with your current needs but doesn't allow you to expand later. Also, having numerous individual batteries, each with a battery management system managing that battery's cells, can be problematic over time as they do not communicate with each other. To get around this, buy the highest voltage battery that you can for your current needs. For example, let's say you calculate that you need 4.8 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, so you purchase four 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries and wire them all in parallel. That would be great for today, but let's say two years from now you need another 4.8 kilowatt hours. Now you have to redesign the battery bank with complicated series parallel wiring with numerous failure points and inefficiencies to get around the 4S or 4P limits. Instead, you could have opted for a single 48 volt 100 amp hour battery from the beginning. Not only does this simplify the wiring and minimize points of failure, but larger batteries like this can often be wired with infinite other batteries in parallel. You will also not have a bunch of individual BMSs, but one, or a few, which means better cell management. Tip number five is to run conduit. For a small solar system, you won't need conduit for your wire runs, at least not indoors. 
but I would recommend that you install it from the beginning anyway, and it will make your life so much easier later on when you expand. Instead of punching more holes in your roof and walls or trying to pull another wire through a maze of obstacles, just run those first wires through a generously sized conduit and you'll never have to make additional holes or deal with complicated wire pulls again. Plus, conduit's cheap, prevents critters from chewing on wires, and makes things look a lot nicer. Tip number six is that data is mandatory from day one. Even if you start out very small with solar, with a single 100 watt panel for example, make sure that you have the ability to monitor the system from day one and gather information on its performance. Not only does this help with troubleshooting any issues, but it also helps you understand when you need to upgrade in the future and how. For example, you might grow into a problem where your grid-tied solar panel system is not offsetting your electric bill each month. So you might assume that you need to upgrade your system, right? If you don't have any data, that would be the only conclusion. But let's say you did have data and the data showed that your production has dropped 20% year over year for the same month. So it can't be that you've outgrown the system because with the same system and the same demand last year you were fine. Finally, you discover that your panels are dirty and need to be cleaned. Problem solved. Or in another scenario, maybe you found that a tree is partially shading your solar panel string for part of the day, so you decide that when you upgrade your system, you need to install another string away from that side of the house. If you had no data that showed a dip in production at a certain time of day every day, you might not have ever figured that out. Knowledge is power. And last but not least, tip number seven is use heavy gauge wire. I think I've said this a million times by now, but I'll say it again. You can never have cables that are too big. Not only will thicker cables increase the efficiency of your whole system by eliminating voltage drop, but it will also allow you to run more current over that same set of wires instead of running another set of wires or, worse yet, ripping out the existing wiring and installing new, thicker wires that you could have installed in the first place. Yes, it costs more up front to install thicker wire, but you'll never regret it. Talk to anyone that has several years of DIY solar experience and they'll tell you the same thing. Believe me, it's cheaper and easier to buy wires from day one that will run two or three times more current than you need than it is to redo the whole thing again in a few years. That does it for another solar video. Please leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up if you learned something.